Hi, welcome back to Mrs. B Reads. We are working on I Am Malala, and this is chapter 17. And in this version of the book, it's on page 104. Chapter 17, Home. After three months of living here and there with strangers and relatives, we were finally on our way home. As we drove down the mountain pass and saw the Swat River, my father began to weep. And when we saw the condition of poor Mingora, we were all in tears. Everywhere we looked, we saw buildings in rubble, piles of wreckage, burned out cars, and smashed out windows. Storefronts had had their heavy metal shutters pried off. Their windows were gaping, their shelves empty. It seemed that every building was pockmarked with bullet holes. It still felt like a war zone. Army soldiers peered down at us from machine gun nests on rooftops their guns trained on the streets. And even though the government had said it was safe to go back, most people were still too afraid to return. The bus station, normally bustling with the chaos of brightly colored buses and hundreds of travelers, was deserted and weeds were growing up through the cracks in the paving. But there was no sign of the Taliban. As we rounded the corner to our home, we prepared ourselves for the worst. We had heard that the houses surrounding ours had been looted. TVs and jewelry had been stolen. We held our breath as our father unlocked the gate. The first thing we saw was that the garden in front of the house had become a jungle. My brothers immediately ran off to check on their pet chickens. They came back crying. All that was left was a pile of feathers and bones. Their birds had starved to death. Meanwhile, I ran to the guest room where I had hidden my books. They were safe and sound. I said a prayer of thanks and paged through them. How lovely to see my quadratic equations, my social studies notes, and my English grammar book again. I nearly wept for joy until I remembered we still did not know whether our school had survived. Someone has been here, my father said as we entered the school gate. The building across the street had been hit by a missile, but miraculously the school was intact. Inside, cigarette butts and food wrappers littered the floors. The chairs and desks were turned upside down in a jumble. The Kushal school sign was in the corner where my father had placed it for safekeeping. I lifted it up and screamed. Underneath were a handful of goats' heads. It took me a minute to realize that they were the remains of someone's dinner. Anti-Taliban slogans were scribbled all over the walls. And inside the classrooms, bullet casings littered the floors. Army Zindabad, which means long live the army, was scrawled on a whiteboard. We understood then who had been staying there. The soldiers had punched a hole in one of the walls on the upper floor through which you could see the street below. Perhaps they had used this spot as a sniper's post. Although it was a mess, our beloved school was still standing. After surveying the damage to the classrooms, my father and I went into his office. There, he found a letter the army had left for him. It blamed the people of Swat for allowing the Taliban to take control of our homeland. We have lost so many of the precious lives of our soldiers, and this is due to your negligence, the letter said. Long live the Pakistani army. My father shrugged. How typical, he said. First, the people of Swat fall under the spell of the Taliban. Then they are killed by the Taliban. And now they are blamed for the Taliban. It was all confusing. I used to want to become a doctor, but after everything we had been through, I began to think that becoming a political leader might be a better choice. Our country had so many problems. Maybe someday I could help solve them. Don't forget to like and subscribe.